sorry. Forgive me for doing that. I'm still trying to wake up. I didn't keep off your job. Hey, everybody. Hi. Um, I'm a relatively new beekeeper. Uh, we got our first hives in the spring of 2001. I got a little book in the fall of 2000 called The World of Bees by Murray Hoyt, and it completely blew my mind. I had never thought about bees in my life as an actual thing to interface with, but I picked up this little book. I was at an organic farm fair, and it was cold and rainy, and I was by myself, and I ducked under a little awning. The guy had like used books for sale, and that little book just kind of popped out at me. So at $4, I bought it. I like sat under the awning and started reading, and by the time I got to about chapter two, I thought, okay, I need bees. And I came home and told my boyfriend, who's now my husband, um, we need bees, and he was like, oh my god, not another thing, but um, for my birthday gift that following spring, I asked to go to bee school, he had the car, I said, I want to go to bee school, I want you to come with me, and I want you to drive. So he had it, it was $30 for eight weeks, he couldn't say no, so we went to bee school, and um, we were about two weeks into bee school when they started talking about chemical treatments, and I thought, nothing in that little book I read talked about chemical treatments, why are they saying we have to use chemicals, and that kind of started our whole adventure into how can we keep bees alive without treatments. We treated our very first spring. Um, we were not happy about doing that and by the next year we were s sourcing out alternatives and now we have, um, a couple of years ago we started a project. We bought about 27 new packages with plans to regress them to small cell following D's plan. Um, we did have a successful regression. We lost a lot of bees coming out of last winter and we built back up again. Now we're down to 11 hives, but they're all survivors for two winters now that um, have not been treated with anything. So we pretty much have quit our day jobs and we are now making a living selling honey from treatment-free bees. So, no, not from our own hives. We're buying honey from people who do not treat and we are packing the honey ourselves and promoting the honey um, as a um, very valuable product because it's from bees that have never been treated. Very cool. So, and you sell it well? I mean, oh yeah, yeah. We're, we're, and it's expensive. Um, we charge a lot for it and people, um, we sell it by giving out tastes. We stand at farmers markets and in-store presentations at the health food stores that let us sell the honey and we just talk non-stop about treatment-free beekeeping. People are always shocked to find out that bees are treated. That's the first thing, like, you mean they put chemicals in the hive, and then we explain, like, the chemicals, what they're used for, why this is so important to support treatment-free beekeeping. And we've been able, I mean, we were, we're good at living on almost no money, but um, we do, we do it's own better, a, It's better to have a little money than no money. Yeah, yes. well, <laughs> we, um, in 2001, I bought a three-family house, and so in the Northeast, it's very common to have houses that have multiple floors, and you can have tenants. So we do have that, you know, it's, that's part of a job, I guess, is we um, we have a house that's an income property. We don't, we don't have houses like that down here. Yeah, I know. That's why I, I, I always explain that when we're somewhere that's not the Northeast. A, a, a single floor house, 800 square feet down here will set you back 150 grand. Right, and yeah, that's exactly just right. a little bit less than I paid for a three-family, and I have two apartments to rent out. Where, so are, you, where are you from? Massachusetts, okay. yeah. And, and, and it was cold up there. Yes, it's very cold. But, um, <laughs> We also were very lucky to make a, um, a bond with a farmer about 45 minutes from our house out in the country in a very underpopulated area. He has 300 acres. Um, the year we met him, he lost all of his early fruit crop and all his early squash crop because he had no pollinators that year. So when we met him, he was hungry for bees. We needed land because at that point we had nine hives in our backyard in the city. And no one was complaining, but we thought we want to expand and we can't really do it in our little city backyard. So we made a handshake with him, and now we have a relationship where basically we don't own his farm, but he lets us act as though we do. We can do whatever we want with our bees there. We can show up whenever we want. He'll give us um, labor for help if we need to do something like build a bear fence or. Is he still uh, raising his crops there? Oh yeah, he has 300 acres, and he goes straight to retail. He doesn't wholesale any of his food, so we've been able to. He's organic. He's not organic, but he's um, a very conscientious farmer. So we feel very comfortable having our bees there. And when you say treatments, are you talking about chemical treatments for like varroa mite? I'm talking about anything. Anything. We don't, the, the honey that we're dealing with is from bees that never got treated with anything. So we're talking antibiotics, sugar syrups, artificial feeds, um, antibiotics, um, sugar dusting, thymol, uh, thyme oil, nothing. 
it's completely treatment free. And people are very excited to hear that there's such a thing and they're happy to pay for it. So. Significant difference in flavor? Um, I think the most significant difference is the honey's never been heated. Okay. So you don't get that bitter aftertaste, but... Um, yeah, there, there is a very distinct difference between heat-treated honey yeah. and raw, off of the honey. I, I can't say that the chemicals necessarily alter the flavor, because I've never really eaten any chemical-based honey, it, it, unless it's like it, unless I've had like the conditioner, the honey-based conditioner drop in my mouth. Why would they heat the honey? They heat honey for two reasons. Two reasons. One, to, L, to A, to help it flow smoother into the bottles and stuff. That's the main reason they do it. And, and B, to kill off things that may be in the honey. There's generally not that much stuff in honey. Not even really grows in it. So, you know. Actually, and, the number one reason is they want to destroy every crystal and then it's all crystallized. That's the number one. That's number one. So you sit on the shelf for 10 years and not, and not do what honey would naturally do. They do, which is crystallized. And honey we sell it crystallizes really, really quickly. So Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's something else. My, my, I did cream honey. I, I had every person from the Bahamas at my house trying to get the cream honey. I did it once, okay? Everybody, you know, spread it like peanut butter. Right, and we do, we live in an area where there's a lot of different immigrant populations and um, people are very, very excited. We have people coming up to us with food stamps trying to buy the honey. We say we can't take the food stamps. They talk amongst themselves and they bring out cash, even though I know they don't have a lot of money because they, they know what the honey is. If they say, oh, this is the kind of thing that I got like in Romania when my grandfather had hives, or in Chinese, Vietnamese, Cambodian, Brazilian, Cuban, um, all people from the islands, every, you know, Eastern Europe, and they all taste it and know what it is, so. Yeah, that's, that's, I used to buy honey in North Dakota every time I was up there in gallon plastic jars, and within six months it would be all crystallized. Yeah, this crystallizes about well, within a couple of weeks. Yeah, question over here. Oh, yeah. Have you ever done any beekeeping here in Florida? No. Or the northeast? No, I'm um, from um, north, west, north, north central Massachusetts, up near the New Hampshire border. That's the only place I can have these. So do you know if it changes much between the north and the south? I will go over that a little bit later. We're doing a beekeeping in South Florida with you guys a little later on. I'll talk with you a little bit about that uh, and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, some of the best beekeepers uh, that we have live in cold areas for some strange reason. They like the winter or something bizarre like that. We're trying to diagnose what mental disease is, but right now, for some odd reason, they like snowflakes. 